Welcome to Digital Asset News, take top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets. Man, I'm bringing them out a bite-sized piece today. we got a lot of bullish stuff to talk about. First up, Twitch director Sean Puri moves a quarter of his net worth into Bitcoin to front-run wave of institutional capital. Is this guy a genius or is he falling victim to FOMO also? Plan B from the stock to flow ratio says Bitcoin is going to enter an enormous bull run year in 2021 and outlines his price targets and biggest risk to Bitcoin. And here's a hint. It's at 300,000. And we'll go over those two bullish articles. But first, I just want to say thanks, everybody who has delegated to the D News Cardano stake pool. We're almost come up at 7 million. So uh, not too shabby in five days. I just want to say thanks to everybody. Just so you know, once we hit 63 million, that means it'll be it'll be uh, saturated and we can't do any more. Uh, it'll look something like this. This is ADLT2 pool. And once you go above 63 million, you get saturated and you start to re uh, lose rewards. So before that happens, we'll let everybody know. If you're still interested in delegating your Cardano to the stake pool, made a very simple uh, web page, which I will link in the description below. Looks something like this. And when you're on the page at the very top, all you have to do is just click on uh, wallets or you can just scroll down, whichever you want to do. And then there's a video right here about 13 minutes and I show you how to stake with Daedalus, Yolroy or ADA Lite wallet. So first, let's get into what's going on in the market. So today it is Sunday, December 13th, and it is around 1 p.m. El Paso, Texas time. And uh, things are up. Usually that's not how it goes on Sunday. Usually we take a dip on Sunday, almost every Sunday. But here we are, 2.5% uh, up, and we're at 20000 for Bitcoin. 5% for Ethereum. We're almost going to break that $600 barrier. I like that. XRP, watch out. 50 cents above. Actually, I'm sorry, 50, almost 52 cents. Wow. 3% up. Oh, amazing. Tether's tether. Nobody cares. Litecoin is up mass, uh, pretty big, 8%. Again, they're part of that uh, uh, PayPal quadrant, which is uh, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, and Litecoin. So they're going to do well for the entire year moving forward. Uh, Chainlink up uh, 7.9. Wow. Uh, what are you, $13? Bitcoin Cash uh, making a run up to 78. A lot of good things are going on with Bitcoin Cash. I'm trying to get the, uh, the director of Bitcoin.com to come on here, Danish. Hopefully he's not too busy. He can come on. Uh, Cardano. Wow. Hey, uh, Cardano up uh, 15 cents. It's pretty good. 4.2 for Polkadot, Binance Coin, and Stellar. Wow. Stellar's making money moves. Look at that. Almost 10%. I like to see that. Bitcoin SV 2.7. Yeah, sure. EOS. I don't even know why. Honestly, between us, I don't know why EOS is here. I don't get it. Uh, NEM 1. Bitcoin Cash, whatever else. Okay, not really that big. So let's take a look at what it would be as we take a look at uh, switching from USD to Bitcoin. How would we have fared if we would have invested into altcoins? And guess what? We would have been up 2.5% on Ethereum, 0.6 for XRP, 5% for Litecoin. That's pretty big. 5% for Chainlink, Cardano, Binance Coin, almost everything. If you would have invested in anything outside of Bitcoin, you would have been up pretty good. And this isn't usually the case all the time. And only time will actually tell uh, who is the genius who decided to pick that low cap gem that had a thousand X or whatever else it is. Or if it just would have better just to go uh, all in on Bitcoin. That is the real story. And that will be determined in, in the future. So speaking of the future, I want to talk to you about this article. This, this right here, this was pretty, pretty fascinating to me. Twitch director Sh Shen Puri. I think I hope I'm saying his name right. But Twitch.com, if you don't know, uh, it was acquired in 2014 uh, with Google for a measly billion dollars. And the gaming platform, uh, Social Network, continues to break its own high scores. Uh, Twitch boasts a valuation of about $3.79 billion. So uh, this guy, director of Twitch, I'm not sure if he was uh, involved in that uh, acquisition back in 2014, but chances to say he's probably got a good amount of money. I don't know how much it is, but it looks pretty good. But this guy says, hey, I am going to put a quarter of my net worth into Bitcoin. A quarter. And I mean, I'm pretty bullish on Bitcoin, but I don't got a quarter in my in Bitcoin. I just don't. But uh, I mean, that's pretty amazing just to go, you know what? I think it's going to happen. And he did it. And here's his, his reasoning. He says, I think it's a rare opportunity to front run a wave of institutional capital that will come into Bitcoin in the next two years. And you know, he's gotta be right. I mean, look at Grayscale. I mean, they're buying up things left and right like nobody's business. And then MicroStrategy, don't even get me started about that. I mean, that guy, Sailor, has convinced everybody Bitcoin is the next big play. And then we got Square and we got Galaxy Digital and he got, I mean, even like like the big players on, on TV or, or the, the investment legends like Paul Tudor Jones and Duck and Miller and all those guys. I mean, they're all saying the same thing. 
we want Bitcoin. So what he's saying here is like, I want to get ahead of it because these institutions can't move that fast to buy these things. And I want to I want to be that uh, before it all gets in. On top of the fact that also uh, PayPal apparently is buying up like almost 70% of the new Bitcoin. That's a lot. So this was a pretty good, pretty good play. But, but the question was, he just said 25% and then he, they're like 25% of what your whole whatever and so with his initial tweet he said 25% and then a user asked him if it referred to his entire net worth and Puri replied yup <laughs> that's a ballsy move so this is what he said people think this time it hits 20k is just like last time but it's not for many reasons and he he goes into some other things and, and it kind of gets a little bit dull here but that is really the truth this 20k uh, magical number uh, people are starting to uh, you know they actually put comments in they say you know what Rob I think it's gonna be like last time it's gonna go to 20k and then it's gonna drop all the way down to uh, 4k like it did be or 5k like it did before in 2017 2018 and that's not the case you have to remember back in 2017 which I was there uh, I actually went through that whole process um, you have to realize that it was just based on a lot of FOMO and there was not there was no really no ground really put down. It was just a bunch, like I said, white paper and, and hopes and dreams. And there wasn't really much there to really propel us to the next level. And it was nice. It, I mean, it could show it was there to kind of show us what it could be. But it went down because we didn't have the infrastructure put in place. We didn't have the things that we have now. We didn't have the people behind us, the, the capital, the institutions really in here. And uh, this is how it is. So when people say, well, it's going to crash back down, I mean, not only is it different than that time frame, and this and this is just a, a quick little little snippet of, of time from really the beginning of 2013 all the way to 2020, uh, you can just see how it was pretty flat. But to really delve into the, the details, we have to take a look at the halving. And when we take a look at the halving, because people say, oh, it's just going to go up and then come back down just like it's done before. But you understand, we are in a whole new halving. So when this all happened, the, the very first halving, because Bitcoin was around 2009, right? So in 2012, it had the halving. And then about a year later, it hit an all-time high. And of course, it corrected, right? And then we had this beautiful, <laughs> when I came around uh, in 2017, it just hit this all-time high and then it came back down. And what I think it is, I truly believe it. this is what's going on, is that we are right here, right just like in 2016 and right just like in uh, early 2012, uh, late uh, 2011, where there was just a bunch of, I mean, there's a big dip here, but a lot of sideways action right here, right? A lot of sideways action right here, right? And then again, we had a big drop in this and that. And then we had a lot of sideways action where people were just like, eh, whatever. So you have to understand that even if we, go all the way back up to 20,000, just look at the very first one. Because when it hits, let's see, let me, let me break down even more. The all-time high, which was, was in 2013, the first halving was in 2012, November, took about a year. And then the price itself was about a thousand bucks. Here's the reward, the reward era, the all-time high, and the price was 12, so it went from 12 to a thousand dollars. So we take a look at this. That's pretty high from, I mean, to them, Back then, I wasn't around then. I don't know if you were, but it was probably mind blowing. They're like, that can't last. And of course, it didn't. So it went back down, but it never went back down to 12 bucks. That's the thing. That's the thing you have to remember. No, it didn't hit a thousand dollars, just stayed a thousand bucks. It took a little while, but it just moved sideways at around 400, 500 bucks, which was about half the price. Wasn't that about what it was for Bitcoin? Around nine, 10, 11, 12, somewhere in there for the longest time. And then we jumped back up. So the same thing here. So 20,000. It went down to about 10 or 11, 12, and now we're back up to 20. So we're kind of like from this point to this point, somewhere around here, I guess, actually, we're about the same price, a thousand bucks. Well, now it'd be 10 or 12,000. So as time moves forward, we're going to start to do eh, 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 this part right here because I believe we're in 2016 again. It all just repeats in a big cycle. And the big difference, though, is that it's just not a bunch of retail. Because back down here, it was just a bunch of anarchists and libertarians. They're like, you know what? Down with the system. And Bitcoin's the best thing of all time. And then, of course, retail picked it up and go, you know what? We'll take it from here. And they did pretty well. And now what's happening is that you still have anarchists. You still have libertarians. You still have retail. They're all three there. But now we got a fourth member, and they're called institutions. And those are the ones that are going to blast us way above this this 20k which is i think is just like going to be a sideways channel for a little bit 
And to help me clarify that point, I'm going to move on to the very next article where it talks about Plan B. He's the one for the stock to flow ratio. It says Bitcoin's going to enter this big, huge bull run in 2021, which is the exact same thing I've been saying like for the last since I started this actual channel. I've always said 2021 is going to be a very big year. That's when it actually has to go, and that just is what uh, you know history is uh, repeating itself as far as like the halvings from one, two, and three. And here we are. So this article I think is real big. So let's just move down here. And the reason why I want to do this because. I want to make sure that everybody just knows exactly where we were and where we are going. You don't know where you're going until you know where you've been. So when people talk to me, they're like, you know, Rob, I think it's going to be the same thing. It's not. It's not. So this is what Plan B says. This is a uh, little piece snippet that he had uh, talked about in one of the uh, uh, interview. He says, if you look at the trajectory of what we had the last 10 years, where it could go to the level of gold and real estate, then I expect Bitcoin to do another 10x or 20x. Uh, it will go north of 100, another 1,000, 100,000. And that is my prediction. My prediction is by the end of 2021, it'll be around 150,000. Uh, some people say that's super conservative. Some people say that's ridiculous. But I think it's in that sweet spot where I don't think I'm going to be way wrong if I'm down 50 or up 50. It could be 100. It could be 200,000. But I think 150, right around there. But he says it'll be it'll be above 100,000 and maybe even above 300,000 before Christmas of next year. Isn't that crazy to think about? Well, yeah, it's like super crazy. But remember this? It was 12 bucks to a thousand bucks. Do you think that wasn't crazy? That was unbelievable back then. So when he starts talking about this, we're like, that could never happen. It already happened. It happened before, it could happen again. So moving down, there's another piece that he said that was pretty interesting. And this is the thing that always blows my mind about Bitcoin maximalists, because I'm not a Bitcoin maximalist. I talk about it a lot because I think it's gonna do very well in the mid to, to near term. I, I don't know. But I do think, I, I can't tell you what's going to happen in like 20 years. No one can. That's ridiculous. But I think in the very early parts to the midterm, it's going to do very, very well because it's on the, the hearts and minds and, and the, uh, the tips of every tongue. And it's in the public consciousness of what people expect to happen. So the big thing I, I could always, I always question is like, why are Bitcoin maximalists so much of, <laughs> they're so maximalism? I think there's always two reasons. One is because they have a lot of it. It's been around for a long time. And when you own something, you get biased. I get biased when I start to, when I own a bunch of things. I'm like, well, that doesn't make any sense. When I first started this channel, go watch my, my earlier videos. I was so bullish on XRP. I was like, you can't tell me nothing. I But it took a long time for me to go, you know what? There might be a couple of cracks there. Not for sure. And then, of course, here we are. Not that it's not going to do well. I'm just saying, I don't think it's, I didn't, I don't think it's going to be like the number one crypto anytime soon. But this is what, what he says. And this is what I think most of these maximalists thinks. They think this. He says, I think it's a winner take all game. I think that lots of the confusion there comes from the fact that some people see Bitcoin and other coins as products or companies. You can have multiple products and some products will win and the other products will lose or multiple companies can go ex coexist together. That's very logical. But Bitcoin is not a company. It's a protocol. It's a protocol, and of course, you can only have one protocol, especially a money protocol. In my eyes, it doesn't make sense to have, in 2020 and beyond, multiple currencies. And that's the big thing. That's why in this channel, I always say cryptocurrencies and digital assets, because when people say cryptocurrencies, they just think of currencies that are on the blockchain. So to me, yes, it only makes sense. You could have like one, maybe two currencies, right? But in all reality, you only need one currency. You only need one world reserve currency. You only need one currency that everybody can interact with and actually use and just, you know, be the, the, the best thing. But that's just it. Like things like, like VeChain and Theta and those types of projects and, and Cardano, they're not currencies. They're all, they are also a protocol and you can build so many things on top of them. They can do such different uh, aspects than Bitcoin can. Bitcoin's not going to track some medication in Sri Lanka across the borders to, to make sure that it, it hits the, the right place and it, it, it goes on the right temperature and all. I mean, and it's not going to be an oracle. It just it doesn't make any sense. But to maximalism, then that totally makes sense because it's all about cryptocurrency. They don't care so much about digital assets. And that's what was the hardest thing to wrap my head around. But I get it. So the last piece here, and we'll wrap this up. And he talks about the risks. And I can see his point here for sure. But again, I don't think it's going to happen. I'm going to tell you why. So the biggest risk that people see is A, government ban or regulation. Governments have been against Bitcoin openly. 
but also trying to kill the predecessors of Bitcoin. Bitcoin was not the first. It was the fourth or fifth or even the sixth. All the others were shut down. And he says, you can even take a look at uh, Facebook Libra. He goes, so in a way, Bitcoin was designed for this risk. And the reason is because with, with Facebook Libra, you have a place to go to. You can go to California. You can go see Mark Zuckerberg. You can go shut it down. Or, or you can say, instead of just going there, you're like, hey, come to us. Sit in front of all us and tell us exactly what you think, and then we'll shut it down, which is exactly what happened. With Bitcoin, you can't do that. There is This was the smartest thing that Satoshi ever did. He just disappeared. I don't know if he's alive or dead, but I think even if he is alive, he knows he can't come back. He knows that he just cannot materialize now because that will be a single point of failure, and you cannot have that. So there is no CEO. There is nobody running the show. It's just a decentralized network of uh, tens 10,000 plus nodes across the entire globe, and you can't stop that. They can ban exchanges, but guess what? If you ban an exchange in America, well, guess who's going to pick that up? Other countries. It's just like, you know what? If you guys want to do it, we'll do it, and we'll run this whole show. So thanks a lot, suckers, for dragging your feet and missing the whole boat, because now we know what to do. And the last thing I want to say is this. It's about, when he talks about 300,000, it sounds ridiculous, right? It sounds crazy. So I want to bring up the old market cap calculator. So the current price today, so let's put this in. So it's about 19,000, right? About 19,000, right? And its circulating supply is roughly 18,500,000, somewhere around there. And I can just tell you right now, it's not even right. Because uh, in the early, early days, uh, a lot of people threw away their Bitcoin because they didn't really know it was even valuable. They lost things on hard drives. So I would say, if I had to guess, at minimum 2 million, and that's the low number, high, million, high number, probably 6 million. The circulating supply is not 18.5. There's no way. There's not, a ch there's not a snowball's chance in hell that's true. But that's what we're going with. Let's just stick with that. So if that's the case, then the market, market cap would be 351 billion. So let's take a look real quick at CoinGecko and Bitcoin. 356 billion. Okay, close enough. Because we're at 19.2. So if we go back, Plan B says we're looking at 300,000. That's pretty crazy, right? 300,000. Circulating supply being the same. You're looking at 5.5 trillion. Five and a half trillion. Is that insane? Is that insane? Well, let me remind you, here's the market cap of gold. It's at a whopping 11 trillion. And that to me is worthless. I mean, I own gold, silver, and Bitcoin, and gold's not going away. But 11 trillion, that's kind of high. So if we just get, I don't know, 10%. So we're looking at what? Over a trillion? All right. What about if we grab into some tokenization of stock markets? What if we get into actual currency currency? Well, just the uh, money supply itself is 95 trillion and <laughs> growing rapidly. And then here's debt. Let's say we do something. How about with real estate? 288 trillion. What about, I don't really care about the rest of this stuff. How about derivatives? How about futures, options, and swaps? You're looking at, uh, well, this is the low end, 558 trillion. And the high end, it's over a quadrillion, which I didn't know that number even existed until I saw this uh, little piece here. So uh, if we talk about five and a half trillion, is, is crazy? No, it's not. Just how it is. So. Look, that is it for today. I know there's a lot of information to go over, but I just want to try to calm people down and just make sure that they have strong hands. Look, all the institutions are out there. They're waiting for you to sell. They cannot wait. They are dying for you to sell what you have so they can snatch it all up and go, thanks a lot, sucker, and off the, off the way they go. So keep your hands strong. Everything should be okay. Also, as a quick reminder, the 12 days of Christmas starts tomorrow. So all you got to do is just uh, show up and watch the video and I'll tell you what to comment. And like tomorrow, we're, gonna, we're giving away uh, four stone books. And then after that, a couple of uh, nano ledgers, then a couple bit, a little bit of money, then some swag and, and all this good stuff. So it's gonna be great. All you gotta do is just show up, watch the video. I'll tell you what to comment and then I'll just draw them randomly. Also, SwiftX, the Australian uh, exchange, they're doing the same type of thing, where but they're they had a lot more cooler stuff than me. Uh, like on the 25th, they're giving away at one full Bitcoin. That's crazy, one full Bitcoin. So to get to this, uh, just go to the uh, exchange of wallet fees. There's a link in the description. It looks just like this. And the one, two, three, the fourth column down. There's a little link right there. It says 12 days of Christmas. Just click on that. And it'll take you right back to what we just saw. So so that's it for today. So thanks so much for watching all the way to the end. I really appreciate it. If you like these types of videos, there's going to be two more that's going to pop up on your left and right. I'll let uh, YouTube do all their magic. And that's all she wrote. So thanks again. I appreciate it. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.